Oh, um, of course, they thought that they had a massive coup this week when uh, Natalie Elphick, the MP, defected over to Labour. But uh, one of the front pages this morning, a couple of them actually, um, Mail on Sunday being one of them, just holding that one up for you to camera right now, Turncoat MP, this is Natalie Elphick, uh, asked Minister to pull strings for her husband's sex abuse trial. I mean, talk I, about seedy. I have a view on this. I, I'm sure you do. Really Let do. me just explain the story first. <laughs> and then, you know, just, uh, just, just, stay, just stay at the starting gate. And then we'll let you through. A Labour MP who defected from the Tories has been accused of trying to exert improper influence over her ex-husband's sexual assault trial by personally lobbying the Justice Secretary. Now, of course, Natalie Elphick has made some comments uh, whilst being a member of the Tory party, whilst being a Tory MP, which certainly I think it's fair to say, whether you agree or disagree with them, don't align with Labour. So many people are saying, well, look, actually, Labour should have not accepted her. It's looking like they have absolutely no principles whatsoever. So what was initially something of a PR coup for Labour this week is actually looking like they've undermined uh, themselves with this. Meanwhile, there was the news <coughs> that we spoke about yesterday where Neil Kinnock said, actually, I don't think that people are that convinced by Labour at the moment, and we're very good at losing elections, we think we're going to win, was what he was saying, referring to his 1992 loss, when he lost against uh, John Major, who I think got a majority of 19 over Labour at that election in the end. And then also you know, we've got Labour's migrant plan, which many people, by using um, terror legislation and the security services, and having some sort of task force to turn back the boats. Some people saying, look, that's not going to go far enough and you're going to be scrapping Rwanda on day one when you don't even know if it's fully going to work yet. So um, I guess my question above all of that, as a result of all of that, is has it been a good or a bad week for Labour? And do you think what's happened in those three stories have helped or hindered their chances when it comes to the election? Is it not as cut and dried for Labour as people are thinking? 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. And of course, with your Eurovision analysis as well, uh, you can uh, uh, call about that as well. And I might put Eurovision calls to the top of the queue, I'm not sure. OK, Dr Rene, go. God, there are so many things in what you've just said that require an answer. So the first thing I want to say about Natalie Elphick is people have been scratching their heads all week about why on earth would she defect, you know. And for me, from the very start, it appeared very simple. She is a through-to-the-bone Tory. If you cut her in half, she is a right-of-centre Tory. She is also a Catholic wife who has been scorned by her husband. She tried very, very hard to stand by him because that's what she believes, marriage is for life. She tried, as we've seen now today, influencing how he was... Um, allegedly. Allegedly, how, she, how he was allegedly by dealt the way, with. That's also on the front page of the Sunday Times today. Elphick asked Lord Chancellor for favour over husband's trial, but do go on. She tried to rubbish the women involved, so she tried to make her husband look... Um, innocent and in the end the evidence against him was so overwhelming he was found guilty that she couldn't anymore take that stance so she stood for his seat she kept his seat and now she has delivered to him a, an absolutely last ditch goal from her saying i have trashed your legacy you held this seat for however many years it was over a decade um i took it over you scorned me you you made me a laughing stock you ruined our wedding vows and now i've trashed your tory seat mm. that for me is what she did you know there is nothing like a woman scorned and i think that's what she's done should labor have taken her of course not the, the fit with labor is absolutely ludicrous and it is the last sort of ditch attempt for her to keep a job. She doesn't want to keep a job, she's standing down. Well then, why is she doing this? Yeah. To stick it to... School. I didn't realise she was standing down. Standing down. 
So what there a was bizarre no... thing to do exactly. then. Exactly. So politically, because everybody can see it's a bad fit, so politically it doesn't say to the world, Labour are so good now and so close to the Tories, you know, that's why I've gone there. Of course it doesn't. But what are Labour thinking? What Labour then... I would understand the logic of Labour keeping, taking her if they thought, right, OK, she's hugely popular and actually it's going to give us another seat. But if she's standing down she, anyway, yeah. then what on earth is the point? Labour could have just... Labour could have looked really principled and said, you know what? The things you've said in the past, we actually don't want you because we are going to be a different government. Exactly. That's what they should have said. They absolutely should have been running the Labour... For me, uh, the, picture, the picture of Keir Starmer standing in front of a union flag, Natalie Elfrick standing next to him with her red, white and blue neck scarf on was laughable. Absolutely laughable. She's the well, only winner like here. they Eurovision act. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They look like they were representing us. But she's the only winner here. She is... She is she has delivered that killer blow to her ex-husband that ruined her life. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I don't know why what Labour were thinking. I do not know what Labour were thinking. And maybe it's demonstrative. We didn't get through all your calls on this yesterday, so I really would like to um, hear from you this morning about this. Um, it really is demonstrative that I just don't think they know what their ideology is and they're slightly flailing around. Now, now flailing around. Now, people might say, as we get a lot of accusations, oh, my word, you know, what about how bad the Tories are? Th that doesn't make the Tories any better, believe me. I don't think they don't have any ideology either. And they're flailing around. But I think that anyone that thinks that that you're going to have a government in waiting, which is what in opposition you're supposed to look like, that has a great list of ideological principles that they're going to be uh, acting on if they get into power. I don't think you're going to get that where Labour are at the moment. To be fair to Labour, I do think that even though she's a terrible fit, even though people are questioning their decision, it does still, amongst many people who won't read into the detail, look like a Tory MP feels comfortable enough crossing the floor to go to them. So, so do you I, think it's only politicos and people who really read between the lines that are going to look at this as something wrong and actually Joe Public is going to look at this and just say, well, oh, look, there we go, look at Labour, look at the headline. Yeah. Labor, uh, Tory defects to Labour, bad yes. for Tories, and, and go that, that deep. That's how people actually ingest their news nowadays, most of them. And also, many of them won't know that she's standing down. So they now think she's going to be a Labour MP at the next election. Yeah, well, I didn't know she was standing down. <laughs> I should have known that, but I really didn't. She isn't. Um,